Hello YouTube, and welcome to this week's episode of Brainstorm, where we give you a glimpse into the world of science. Our top story comes from the world of medicine. A team at Harvard Medical School have successfully cured sickle cell disease in mice. Sickle cell disease is genetic and results in a mutant form of hemoglobin, causing the sickle-shaped red blood cells. However, the mutation that causes the disease only affects adult hemoglobin, not fetal hemoglobin produced during development in the womb. So the gene responsible for the switch from fetal to adult hemoglobin was suppressed in mice that usually develop sickle cells. This resulted in a drastic increase in fetal hemoglobin production into adulthood and better organ health. In applying this to humans, a gene therapy could target the same gene with hopefully the same effect. A less expensive method would be using a drug that interferes with the gene, but obviously more research is needed. Our next story comes from the world of evolution. Researchers at the University of Washington have found a gene that may be important in human brain development. The reason this particular gene is being studied is because multiple copies of it exist in the human genome, but not in other apes. About 3.4 million years ago, the gene was partially duplicated, resulting in a shorter version of the protein the gene codes for. This partial copy was itself duplicated 2.4 million years ago, and has since become a permanent part of the human genome. This gene's protein is involved with brain cell mobility, with the shortened version interfering with the cellular projections they use to move. The idea is that less projections means more streamlined movement, allowing brain cells to construct more layers of the cortex. And a quick update from the world of robotics. Engineers at the University of Pennsylvania have designed a robot that can construct new body plans for itself from foam. There is a central module called the mothership that arranges smaller joint modules, after which the mothership sprays a foam that hardens into the body of the robot. The hope is that this would allow a robot to customize its body plan to adapt to different scenarios and terrains. Our final story comes from the field of nanotechnology. Pennsylvania State University researchers found that a nanoscale battery can also act as a motor. It consists of a small copper nanowire with a platinum end. Once placed in an oxidant solution, a redox reaction occurs. The copper acts as the battery's anode and the electrical field generated propels the motor forward in an extremely efficient reaction. Speeds of around three times its length per second for durations of around 40 to 60 seconds have been observed, depending on copper length and oxidant concentration. Also interesting is the ability to turn the motor into a spinning rotor by polishing only one side of the copper. The main applications for these motors is medical for targeted drug delivery, so more research needs to be done on biocompatible materials and fuels for this technology. Well, hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please consider subscribing and be sure to check the links in the video description.